Welcome to 719 FPV. I'm Nick Roberts, and today we are going to be working in beta flight to hopefully make the Tiny Go fly a little bit better. Um, no, we're not going to be doing any tuning today. We are just going to be updating the firmware from beta flight 4.2.11, which I currently have, up to the not quite released yet. But it seems like it's pretty promising. So we are going to go to firmware beta flight 4.3.0. Alright, so first note. When we're going to be working on beta flight for a little while. Um, before you plug in, you have to know that this little guy. When you plug in using the USB. Uh, it powers up everything. Including the VTX, the camera, and the receiver. Um, so things kind of heat up a little bit. So I like to, I've got an old fan, it's a laptop cooling fan I, I like to use. Um, so I'm just going to plug in and have this guy setting right on top of the fan, keeping it nice and cool. Alright, so let's go ahead, plug into beta flight. Let's see what we're working with. Looks like it, we're connected. Everything looks good. Let's set that somewhere, it won't fall down. There we go, that's fine. So first thing we wanna do is make sure we have a backup of our configuration. Um, go ahead and go to your CLI tab. You're gonna type in diff all hit enter this is going to pull up your entire configuration go ahead and you're going to save to file let's just go ahead make a new folder of drone configs save it in there now that's saved we're going to take a look at upper left hand corner our target is GPR or GEPR slash GEPRC F411 STM32 F411. That is our target for when we update. So let's go ahead and go to setup. All right, and once you are ready, we'll go ahead and hit update firmware. And this will All right, so we need to put our quad, our drone into bootloader mode. So go ahead in the CLI, um, go ahead and type in BL, hit enter. Looks like it did not work. All right, that means I need to So on the tiny go Cannot actually reach the bootloader button that is on the flight controller So I need to um, so because the port didn't automatically detect and go into DFU, we're going to go to impulserc.com pages downloads and get the driver fixer. Go ahead and just click on that. That'll download really quick. My downloads. Okay. 
go ahead and just start impulse RC. It'll detect your flight controller. It is now installing the DFU driver, which it has popped up right here. So that should finish up momentarily. All right, so we are in DFL bootloader. So let's go ahead, show unstable releases. Now, if we remember what our board was, we are GEP RC. All right. So we have three of them here. I'm gonna go ahead and just do this one. And that looks like the latest. Yep, so we're gonna choose that. Full chip erase. Gonna load the firmware. Loaded. Now flash the firmware. All right, so we were successful. Now, go ahead, connect. You, this box will pop up, always hit apply custom defaults. Uh, if not, nothing will work. Um, we'll get another one of these. It says the accelerometer is enabled and not calibrated, so. We have to calibrate our accelerometer. Um, so it looks like all right. So right away, our flight controller is flipped 180 degrees. So the front is the back, and the back is the front. Um, all of that should get fixed when we go to our CLI. Hit load from file. And then we're gonna go ahead, get that saved diff all file and execute. Now this right here might be controversial, um, but I've been I've been really looking into this and I've been watching UAV Tech. Uh, he has some really good videos on all of this. And he's very confident that you can indeed uh, do a full CLI dump and everything that is come up with an error, we will actually just not be written in and you will you will end up with the default anyway so this should all be good to go and i should have little issues um, i will definitely be cautious when i am first powering up um, just in case i have some something terrible go wrong but fairly confident in this and we should be good to go so now that that's loaded up, you have to type in save, hit enter. It'll save and reboot. Now let's see if the accelerometer is all right. So our flight controller is now config configured properly. Where forward is forward, back is back, left is left, right and right. Yaw axis is correct. All looks good and great. Um, let's go ahead and just calibrate the accelerometer anyway, just, just to make it a little bit more accurate. Perfect. That looks good to me. Now let's quickly run through, make sure everything looks correct. Our ports look like they came in correctly. Our VTX is set up. Configuration. Everything looks good to go. 
power and battery, that's all the same. Fail safe, PIDs. All right, so PIDs. I don't think the PIDs transferred over, but I didn't actually alter mine to begin with, so I had defaults anyway. So this is all the default PIDs. Um, my rates did come over, which are actually my aux four switch is working. I'm still rotating through my rate profiles. One, two, and three. Using my aux four switch, that looks good to go. So I believe that was a successful firmware update. Double check, double check the receiver tab. Make sure I do want to go through everything. Everything is mapped correctly. That's good. Love it. My adjustments, I still have my rate profile switch. My OSD. OSD looks like it has not changed. We are good to go. VTX, we are still race band channel 7 with a power output of 200. Let's leave that there. All right. Looks like firmware update to 4.3.0 is successful. Let's Last thing to do is go fly and see if it see if it flies better. Um, so just to reiterate, we are on the the default PIDs, default filters. Um, this is exactly what you'll get when you update. Um, so it does actually look like the filters changed. So let's just go ahead and see how 4.3.0 uh, flies just on the defaults. I bet it's pretty good. They seem to know what they're doing. So let's go fly. <laughs> 